Hello everybody, this is Dane Wallace. I am the Assistant Professor of Paramedical Technology for the University of Alaska Anchorage Matanuska Susitna Paramedic Program. And I've gotten a lot of questions about paramedic school. Uh, I've gotten some questions about how COVID-19 has affected paramedic school, what our plans are for the future, and then mostly a lot of people interested in applying for paramedic school probably because of the attention that frontline healthcare workers like EMTs and paramedics have gotten out of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I thought I would make a video to help students uh, try to understand um, what all is involved in going to paramedic school, what the application process is like, and maybe answer some of the more common questions that students have when they come to a one-on-one -on -one faculty advising appointment with me. Of course, this video is not a replacement for a one-on-one -on -one faculty advising appointment, and I would encourage you to schedule one, if, especially if you're interested in applying for the 2021-2022 uh, paramedic program, which will start in August of 21, and the application deadline for that school is going to be May 17th at 5 p.m. There'll be more information towards the end of the slide about the application process. First of all, let me just um, briefly discuss a little bit about our accreditation. Like most specialty programs at the University of Alaska, Anchorage, uh, especially in health sciences, our program is accredited. We happen to be accredited by the uh, Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Education Programs, that's KHEP. And we've been uh, uh, continually accredited since 2015. We just got re-accredited. Uh, effective January 2020. So we're in good standing with our accreditation. Nothing to worry about there. Students who take our program, successfully complete the program and graduate are eligible because of our accreditation to take the National Registry of EMT's paramedic examination. And that exam is important because the state of Alaska Medical Board only issues licensed uh, licenses to those students who have uh, taken and completed and successfully completed the National Registry EMT paramedic exam. And our students do, and uh, I guess I'll just plug my, ourselves a little bit. Um, since I started in the program in 2015, our students have a 100% first-time pass rate on the National Registry EMT paramedic exam. There's only a very few programs in the country that can say that, so we're pretty proud of that uh, statistic. As you might know about the paramedic program, it's undergone, undergone, undergone excuse me, some changes in the past few years um, with regard to how you can take the program. Uh, up until recently, 2018 to be exact, students had to complete all of the prerequisites for the Associates of Applied Science Paramedical Technology degree before coming to paramedic school, and that's not the case anymore. Students who want to come to paramedic school who may be working or not interested in pursuing a degree because they already have another degree or they're pursuing a different bachelor's degree, do not have to complete the prerequisite work um, for the uh, Associates of Applied Science Paramedical Technology degree. The only prerequisite to attend paramedic school is to have your EMT, and you can either have your National Registry EMT or you can have your State of Alaska EMT. I strongly recommend um, to go ahead and attempt to get your National Registry uh, EMT. You'll need that later for an internship for your internship, and also it's really good preparation for the entrance exam that the program administers. And again, we'll talk about uh, application process and entrance exams later in the presentation. Um, so, if you are interested in the Associates of Applied Science degree, then these are the courses that you would need to take in order to satisfy the degree, including coming to paramedic school. So emergency medical technician, which everyone who applies to paramedic school needs, that's a prerequisite. Anatomy and physiology one and two, and both of those have a lab. You don't have to necessarily take them at UAA, although we have excellent instructors here at Matsu College who teach AMP and would be happy to have you in their class. We do recommend, however, that those courses are um, taken at the same regionally accredited institution. So we don't recommend you take AMP 1 in one school and then transfer and take AMP 2 at another school. There's just problems with course organization and course sequencing, and some students find that they've basically taken AMP 1 twice. 
but just because of the way the numbering is or the way the content is organized at certain institutions. And we can't predict or be responsible for how other institutions organize those courses. Um, I highly recommend that you take anatomy and physiology one and two before coming to paramedic school, whether or not you're pursuing the degree, the Associates of Applied Science degree. It is a really good foundation for all students in the health sciences, whether you're going into nursing or paramedic school or PA school or med school. And you'll see later that you'll already be tested on anatomy and physiology knowledge uh, before even starting paramedic school as part of the entrance process. So uh, go and take your anatomy and physiology one and two course prior to attempting paramedic school. I think you'll find that it is helpful. It gives you an advantage in the program. Uh, you'll you'll have to learn some good uh, high quality study skills as a student in that course. It's a difficult course, and um, it just makes good common sense. If you're going if you want to learn about doing things to the human body, you should understand how the human body works. It's pretty simple. You would also need a writing class, actually two writing classes. We made some suggestions here on the screen, um, as well as a math class and then a public speaking class. We recommend Com A One Eleven. Those courses as well as taking paramedic school, is what makes up the Associates of Applied Science and Paramedical Technology degree. You can complete those courses first in a very traditional way and then come to paramedic school so that when you fin param finish paramedic school and your capstone internship, you will also be completing your Associates of Applied Science and Paramedical Technology degree. If that doesn't work for you because of your job or, or past life experiences or just where you are, um, you can also finish all of those requirements after completing paramedic school, and you have five years to do that from the time you start in a program. So by the time you finish paramedic school, you'd have about three years left. And most of these courses are offered online, so there really is just no reason why you couldn't achieve an Associates of Applied Science and Paramedical Technology degree if you wanted one. I strongly recommend it because so many states in the United States um, are now requiring the Associates of Applied Science degree as a minimum to get your paramedic license. It's not true for the state of Alaska currently, but I can imagine a future in two or three years where that is a requirement. So give it some thought. It may be, uh, may be the right route to take for you, whether you take paramedic school first and then finish the degree requirements or do it the other way around. It doesn't matter. It's, we're flexible. You can do it the way that works best for you. So, as I mentioned, the program's undergone some changes uh, in the past years, and the, the program's actually been around since 2003 at UAA. Not here at Matsu, but um, it, within the UAA system. Um, but back then, it was a traditional seated paramedic program. We call it P PMED, like med school, but PMED school, paramedic school. Um, it's been part of uh, the degree program since for all that time. It, as I said, it, it used to be a traditional classroom-based sort of academy style um, program and some of those elements still exist in the program but in large part it has changed. Um, it generally takes students 11 months to finish the um, traditional coursework part of it and then they have their internship. During that whole entire time ambulance clinicals and hospital clinicals are something that students do as a part of their coursework and then at the end students go on an out-of-state capstone internship which is required by the medical board and by the state of Alaska. And we'll talk more about that uh, as we move through the presentation. Starting in the 2019-2020 academic year, um, as I mentioned, you can do either the degree requirements first and then go to paramedic school or paramedic school, then the degree requirements, it's totally up to you. Again, the only absolute prerequisite is your EMT certification, either the Alaska or the National Registry. I also highly encourage you to take AMP 1 and 2. Um, and if you decide to just come to paramedic school, not having the associate's degree will not hold you up. You'll be able to go take the National Registry, apply for your license, and go to work at that point. Um, I, I've already emphasized this once. I'll emphasize it again. Paramedic school is difficult. It's rigorous. There's a lot of reading. There's a lot of study. It's intensive. Um, we have high expectations. And so, again, I just strongly recommend that you should take anatomy and physiology one and two before starting the program. If you don't have any healthcare experience, you don't have any EMS experience, um, you, you've not taken anatomy and physiology before, you'll find this um, incredibly helpful. As a second point, I also strongly advise if you're a new EMT, you've just gone through EMT school, 
that you probably would benefit from real world ambulance experience as an EMT before attempting paramedic school. I, many, many students get excited about the, uh, going, continuing their education, going to advanced levels of care during EMT school. And what we have found here in our program is that the students who uh, get their EMT or their EMT2, even if you're, if you're in the state of Alaska, or intermediate or AEMT if you're outside of the state of Alaska, um, they really benefit to, by getting real world application before attempting paramedic school. It just makes paramedic school make more sense. Uh, it gives you something to sort of anchor some of the concepts to. You've seen some patients, you've been around the equipment, you've been around uh, EMS professionals, and it is just very helpful. It's a good foothold to, to, um, to start your paramedic training on. That doesn't mean it's required. You could certainly go from EMT school directly into paramedic school. It just means it's going to be more difficult. You'll, uh, your resolve will be tested more. Some concepts may, may be more complex or difficult to understand. Um, and that's okay. It just depends on the kind of student that you are, what kind of learner you are, and how, uh, how determined you are to get through paramedic school. It's a challenge. This is how paramedic school is organized uh, currently as we speak. Um, and so you just should know this. You'll apply with a group of students and those students who get accepted, they'll go through the whole paramedic school together. You, can't, you don't pick and choose. They're offered in a sequence in an order and you take them in that order. So in the fall semester, which is August through December of 2021, we'll offer a course called PMED A241 and PMED A242. 241 is the classroom work, and lab skills, those kinds of things. And PMED 242 are the clinical rotations. <clears throat> in the spring, um, we'll, which is January through May of 2022, we'll offer a course called PMED A253, which again is the class and lab work, and PMED A254, which is the clinical rotations. That's hospital and ambulance clinical rotations. In the summer, which is May through July of 2022, we'll offer offer PMED A263 and PMED A264. Again, <coughs> PMED A263 is the class and lab, and PMED A264 is clinical rotations. And then the final course that you'll have to take is um, in the fall of 2022, probably starting in August, is PMED A295, and that's your field internship. Now, if you note there on the screen, it says out-of-state field internship, and that's true for most students. We recommend that most students go to a very high, a high volume progressive EMS agency in the lower 48. The university has multiple contracts with agencies um, that accept our students. There are very, some, some very few exceptions uh, and COVID has tested some of those exceptions in interesting ways, but in general, uh, students go out of state to one of those uh, locations so that you can get it done quickly because they have high call volume and you're going to see a wide variety of cases and types, and you're going to see progressive EMS agencies. And many of those things just aren't available here in the state of Alaska. We want you to bring back that knowledge. We want you to bring back that progressive mindset. We want you to bring back that experience to benefit Alaskans here, where it's just not available to train most paramedics in the state. So what is the difference between the traditional format that we used to do and the blended learning format that we run now and in which 2021-22 paramedic program will be a blended learning paramedic program. Well, the blended learning paramedic program is made up of four individual components. So each semester, fall, spring, and summer have these elements, these four elements. Part number one is distance learning. Uh, we rely heavily on distance learning. Other, other, uh, another way to describe that is asynchronous coursework that's done online. And if you've taken a distance course before, maybe you've used um, Blackboard to access your assignments, your reading assignments. You're going to see videos on Blackboard. You're going to read articles and um, have group discussions um, on Blackboard. You're going to do homework assignments and submit them on Blackboard. You're going to take quizzes and tests on Blackboard. We also use a learning management system called Navigate 2, which is from the publisher of the textbook. And uh, we assign from either Blackboard or our Navigate. We release those modules um, on around Sunday night, and they're due the following Monday. So you'll, you'll have a week to do your homework, 
um, all the stuff that's assigned online, and uh, you'll just go week by week. So that's the distance learning component. component. I surveyed our students um, from the 2020 program, and they told me that they spend between 16 and 20 hours a week on distance learning. It's not a small part of the work that you'll do in the paramedic program. It really is the, the basis of, of most of the learning that you'll do in the paramedic program is this distance learning format. Um, for those of you who like distance learning, that's great. It's going to work out great for you. For those of you who don't, don't worry. Part two is for you. Uh, you'll need to do the distance learning components, but we also meet face-to-face -face, um, uh, during instructor-led classroom sessions twice a week. We meet on um, Monday and Wednesday evenings from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And those meetings are in the evening so that if a person has a day job, they need to be somewhere 8 to 5, um, then they can attend those meetings from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's also helpful for those students who happen to be um, in the emergency services already. Maybe you're a firefighter or you're an EMT2 working for an agency, you want to come to paramedic school. I, it's often easier for them in the evening to kind of get away from their um, duty crew, find a quiet place, log on to classroom from work, and attend class versus uh, in the morning when there's a lot of activity, shift change, uh, ambulance checks, fire truck checks. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the morning at most uh, departments. So we try to set it in the evening so it's a little bit more convenient for most people to attend. You can attend the classroom sessions one of two ways. You can either come face to face, and many people like being in the face to face classroom environment. I'll be in the front teaching, uh, just like any traditional teacher would, or you could attend by video conference. And our classroom is set up to allow that. We've got really large 80 inch, 80 inch TV screens in the classroom. So students who are calling in uh, to participate as a video conference students uh, really feel like they're involved with the classroom conversation. The students in the classroom can see those students on the screen, so they, they know they're present and part of the conversation. They talk back and forth to each other. Um, it's easy for me to, to, to work with both groups at the same time because of, we have a really great classroom at Matsu. So, um, so you could do either one of those. You may end up doing both of those, especially if you are a shift worker. You may find that you can come to class and sit in the classroom when you're off shift and you like that and that you've gotten permission from your employer when you're on shift to call in uh, from your duty shift. Um, and I frequently get this question from those types of students, what happens if I get a 911 emergency response while class is going on? Very simple. The classes are recorded Zoom by Zoom, and then when you're done with your call and you have time, you come back and watch that class later, complete a Blackboard assignment, uh, which is questions and answers from that class, and that proves that you attended that class and then you get credit for attending that class. It's pretty simple. Uh, a similar follow-up question is, well, if the classes are recorded, do I need to attend? Yes, we have a 100% attendance policy. So don't think that you can just get by by watching um, uh, Zoom recordings in paramedic school. You need to be there. We do allow three absences throughout the semester for emergencies, family issues, sickness, those kinds of things. But that's a separate issue from um, being an emergency service worker who's called away on a 911 call. We want to be flexible and convenient, but also have high standards. The third part of the blended learning program is on-campus skills labs and simulation training. We offer two tracks for different types of students. Lab track number one, I call that the traditional lab track. It's real simple. It meets every Thursday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. face-to-face in our lab here at Matsu College, and we have an incredible lab. We have gotten, uh, in the past five years, we've gotten a half a million dollars uh, in grants funds for technology, for upgrades, for equipment, and it's just an amazing place to train. We have an ambulance simulator, several high-fidelity mannequins, a full simulation suite, um, lots of equipment. Uh, it's a good place to train. Uh, but the students in Lab Track 1 will come and be in the lab face to face every Thursday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And those are people who live close enough to Matsu that they could easily commute here, probably by car, um, and, and be, a, be a part of the lab every single week, one day a week on Thursdays. But that's not true for everybody, and that's why we offer Lab Track 2. Lab Track 2 is very different. It has some very different components. And uh, it, even after this, you may still have some questions. So you, maybe you don't live near here. You don't live on the road system in Alaska. Maybe you don't even live in the state. Maybe you live in Washington or Oregon or somewhere else. 
and you're going to be traveling at some point to come uh, be a part of our lab intensives, then Lab Track 2 is for you. Uh, we offer six throughout the whole program, fall, spring, and summer. We offer six one week, that's Monday through Friday, skills labs that we call lab intensives um, to try to reduce the travel, the cost of travel for students who don't live here. Four of those are live and in person lab intensives, and two of them are virtual lab intensives. You could attend from via Zoom, they're just organized in a way that you could participate at home. Via, uh, via Zoom by video conference. If you wanted to attend the virtual labs, you could certainly attend live, not a problem at all. The 2021-22 lab track dates are still um, being scheduled, they're to be determined, but essentially they're the beginning and end of, of, of each semester. Um, in addition to those lab intensives, to keep your skills sharp and keep you on a nice growth uh, line there, and not lose any ground between lab intensives. There are some other requirements for Lab Track 2 participants that you need to know about. We require Lab, in, lab Track 2 participants to attend weekly, to, sorry, to complete weekly self guided lab skills assignments, which, which is something that will be given to you by Blackboard online. And you would read those assignments and complete and submit those lab assignments weekly. We also require you to find a local paramedic mentor. This is an experienced paramedic who would be willing to work with you for a semester at least to answer questions you might have, to give you tips or tricks, to show you some of the little uh, ins and outs of, of some of the skills that you're going to be learning on your own at home. And it's just good to have a person to kind of bounce things off of and, and show you how things are done when you can't get one of us face to face. In addition to the weekly self-guided lab skills assignments online, and the paramedic mentor, all Lab Track 2 people, uh, students, have weekly instructor check-ins via Zoom with our instructor staff here. It's an accountability check-in to make sure you're getting your, duck, your work done, to see if you have any questions, and then to help with any problems that you might have. And that's about an, eight, an hour to 90 minute a week uh, Zoom video conference with a lab instructor here. A question I get a lot about these, can students flip-flop between the lab tracks? Kind of yes, uh, and kind of no. You, when you register for a lab track and you choose a lab track, that's your lab track for the whole semester. If you don't, if you feel that you're doing well in that lab track and you might do better in the other one, the next semester you could register for the other lab track if you want to. So from semester to semester, you could change lab tracks depending on how you're doing and if it's meeting your needs or not. Um, but once you're in a lab track, you're going to be in that lab track the entire semester. You can attend both lab tracks if you want to. Like if you're a lab track one student, you meet every Thursday, but you want to attend the week-long lab intensives, we would love to have you. That would be fantastic. It's, it's great for, um, for um, morale between the students, get to know some different students and that kind of thing. If you're a lab track two student and you happen to be available and in town on a Thursday, by all means, come and join the lab track one students as they're training um, and building their skill set. The only thing I would ask if you're going to pop in or visit is that you plan to stay for an entire four hour block of lab instruction. So essentially we go um, from you know nine to one and then in the afternoon we go from one to five. So just plan to stay for a whole hour, a whole four hour block. Uh, it just helps us organize our groups and rotations and, and lab skills um, and it's just easier to manage. Uh, and the last thing the last piece of paramedic school that you'll do every semester is the clinical rotation. So each semester, you'll be required to do 15 12 hour shifts uh, at local hospitals or on board local ambulances, fire and EMS agencies. Um, if you don't live in this area, the university compliance office will work with you and with our clinical coordinator. Her name is Tiffany Perry and we will help you get a contract at your local hospital if it's suitable. Not all local hospitals are suitable, um, but for the most part, we can probably get some of your clinical rotations done at your local hospital. It, it just means we don't, we may not have a contract with your local hospital, and that could take a little bit of time. Same is true for your local ambulance agency. So the contract must be in place, the memorandum of agreement between the university and your agency that explains the liability, insurance, the role that you play, what their responsibilities are. Um, needs to be in place before you can attend clinicals locally. So for example, if you happen to live in Oregon or Washington, we'll look or look in your community and try to find the hospital that makes the most sense and we'll try to put a contract in place there. But it does take some time and if a contract doesn't exist, 
um, there may be a short delay in you starting clinicals locally. Naturally, all students in the program could always attend clinicals locally here in the Matsu Valley or in Anchorage at one of the hospitals or EMS agencies that are, that are local to us uh, where we already have contracts. And then the final piece, the very last part of paramedic school is called the capstone internship. And the state medical board and the state division of EMS requires a 480 hour field internship. We generally prefer students to go out of state for that simply because there's not enough placement opportunities in the state and most agencies in the state don't have sufficient call volume to complete the internship in a timely manner or provide a high quality academic experience while doing it. So um, we have uh, sites in Houston, Fort Worth, Denver, Portland, and Spokane and there's always sites at being added to the list uh, from year to year. So um, you can go where we have contracts and we'll be happy to place you there. Lots of people ask, what if I have family who lives in one place or the other? Do I get to choose? Yes. You tell us your preference and we'll try to get you placed there. Obviously, uh, we can't place everybody at the same site, so there's always some uh, give and take on that. So to try to put some of these pieces of the blended learning paramedic program together and help you understand how you might participate in paramedic school, given that you have some choices in what, how, how you're going to you're going to attend school versus you know video conference versus in-person classes or um, lab track one versus lab track two and so forth. I made some sort of examples. These aren't real people. I just I'm using them as examples uh, to kind of help you understand. So example number one is Joe. Joe is an EMT three. He's been working for his local fire department for about three years, and he lives in Juneau, Alaska. You you can see that Joe's a, a member of the, the Juneau Fire Department. And so after getting accepted into paramedic school, Joe will complete the weekly online assignments on Blackboard and Navigate 2, just like everybody. He'll attend class on, it should say, Monday and Wednesday nights from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. by Zoom video conference because he can't physically be on our campus here in Palmer, Alaska. He lives too far away and he'd need a plane or a boat to get here. Um, Joe will then fly in to attend the four lab intensive weeks attend the virtual lab intensives and coordinate his clinical rotations while he's in town. Uh, and he probably will do some of them locally in Juneau once contracts are in place there. He'll then go on his paramedic internship. And after he gets his paramedic license, Joe plans to return to college to complete his Associates of Applied Science degree in paramedical technology. And remember, he's got five years to do it. Um, so Joe's gonna, it's gonna fit Joe's needs perfectly to come to the blended learning program here. The next example is Jane. Jane is a full-time EMT2 here in the, in the Matsu Valley, and that's where our campus is located. And she wants to go to paramedic school. She works 24-hour shifts, and then she's off for three days. We call that a 24-72 schedule. After being accepted to paramedic school, Jane will complete the weekly on online assignments on Blackboard Navigate 2, just like Joe, just like every student. She'll attend classes in person when she's not on shift because she can drive here and be in class. And she'll attend by Zoom video conference when she is on shift with the permission of her employer. That's really important. Students who are employed and are using their employer's computer, their employer's internet, and their employer's space for ethical reasons need to get permission from their employer. And their employer needs to acknowledge and support that they're attending paramedic school in this way. Uh, number three, depending on her level of expertise and her employer's flexibility, Jane might either attend the once a week labs or the lab intensives every semester. In general, the students who attend the weekly labs, the Thursdays, Lab Track 1, they're less experienced, newer EMTs, and they want a slower pace. They want more weekly contact with instructors. And students who attend the lab intensives usually have more experience and are uh, maybe advanced AE AEMTs or EMT2s or 3s. Um, and they can move through the material a little bit faster. So keep that in mind. There is a little bit of a personality or a dynamic between those two lab uh, tracks that you might um, you might find that you're a better fit for one than the other. Um, when when Jane is um, finished with paramedic school, she'll go on her paramedic internship, and that's going to need some coordination with her employer because she's going to need time off to go do her paramedic internship. So it's probably better if Jane discusses that with her supervisor, with her with her agency. Uh, before enrolling in paramedic school to make sure that they have the capability to give her that time off and it's not going to cause a problem for her job. 
that's something that I like to have students think about early, especially if they're working for an agency. Um, Jane's already taken AMP 1 and 2 because she took my advice, and that's helping her or, or will. So after paramedic school, she just needs the writing classes, math class, and the comm classes to finish her degree. And that would only take her a couple semesters, and she'll have her Associates of, of Applied Science and Paramedical Technology. And she'll be right on track. The last example is Lauren. Lauren is a brand new EMT. Uh, she's a brand new high school graduate. She graduated from King Tech and she's working towards her Associates of Applied Science in Paramedical Technology. She doesn't have any experience as an EMT. She spent her first year in college completing all of the Associates of Applied Science degree requirements, so anatomy, physiology, writing, math, communication. <clears throat> and after being accepted to paramedic school, Jane will complete the weekly online assignments on Blackboard Navigate 2 just like Joe and Jane. I'm sorry, Lauren will complete the um, assignments. She'll attend classes in person on Tuesday and Thursday nights from, sorry, Monday and Wednesday nights from 6 to 9 p.m. along with Joe and Jane. She'll attend the weekly labs on Thursdays from 8 to 5 and um, and she'll try to come to those lab intensives if she can make it to get some extra training. And then she'll go on her paramedic internship and when she completes her internship, She'll finish paramedic school and graduate with her Associate of Applied Science in Paramedical Technology, and she'll be a pretty young paramedic uh, with a degree, uh, which is nice. So even for traditional college students that want that traditional college experience, it works for them as well, too. So hopefully, maybe your situation includes, looks like Joe or Jane or Lauren, or maybe it's slightly a little bit different than Joe or Jane or Lauren. It's totally fine. It's just a way to help you kind of understand how the pieces work um, and how you could come to paramedic school depending on your situation, what might work the best. So just a little bit about the, the program since we changed to the blended learning program. It's a real diverse group of students and someone in there is probably like you. We've got students living and working in Wasilla, Palmer, Anchorage, Talkeetna, Haynes, Girdwood, Juneau, and Nome. So all across the state of Alaska, on the road system, off the road system, local to our area, some not so far away, and then some that are very far away. We've had students that are working a schedule that's two weeks on, two weeks off on the North Slope. We have had several Anchorage fire to firefighter uh, EMTs attend the program, and, and we generally get very good feedback from those uh, students. We've had part-time EMS workers from the Matsuburo EMS. Sometimes they call them on-call responders from Matsuburo EMS. We've had full-time, eight to five, uh, healthcare workers that are that have been medical assistants or CNAs uh, doing different kinds of jobs that attended paramedic school and then we've got a whole host of traditional college students who graduate high school take a year of college and then come to paramedic school so maybe you're like one of those students and uh, this will be a fit for you too so um, let's move on and talk a little bit about the paramedic program application um, as I record this video, it is the spring of the year, and we're in, definitely in the application phase. And there's plenty of time to fill out your application if you're interested in paramedic school. So let's just go through that process so you can understand it, and, uh, and you'll be able to um, complete that process if you'd like, or seek more information or, or get more help if you need. So there's four steps to the online application. So first of all, click on the application link. You can find that at matsu.alaska.edu on the paramedic program page. Um, and there'll be a link, uh, just a couple slides that you can use your, um, your phone to um, access it by QRC if you want. Uh, but you can do matsu.alaska.edu or you can use the QRC that's coming up later. But the first thing to do is review that application. It's got a checklist. Look at the instructions. Read through it carefully. Several of the things I'm talking about here are, are listed in the application as well if you have questions. Um, once you've gathered all the documents that are required from the application checklist and saved them as a PDF on your computer, then I would complete the program application. And all you have to do is upload all those documents. Once you get the documents, uh, you know, you need a resume, you need letters of recommendation, you need your transcripts, um, you need your EMT certificate, your CPR certificate, things like that. Um, they're, they're all listed in that checklist. Once you have those collected and as a, as a PDF on your computer, it's really easy to fill the application out. It'd take you about 20 minutes. And then you can upload all those documents and you'll be done. 
um, and then hit submit. Remember, the application deadline this year is May 17th, 2021, before 5 p.m. We do not accept late applications. So once the application is submitted, what happens next? What's the rest of the process? There's four steps, and we're going to go through those four steps so that you kind of understand them and you can be prepared for them. Step number one, as I've mentioned, is the submission of the online application, which is due May 17th, 2021, before 5 p.m. The second step is you'll be scheduled to take something called the FISDAP paramedic entrance exam. And that is a nationally administered test for many paramedic schools in the country. And if that's a validated computer-based online test that needs to be proctored by an exam proctor. The test has four sections, EMT knowledge, anatomy and physiology knowledge, there's that AMP again, math, and reading comprehension. In order to come to paramedic school here, your cumulative score on the exam needs to be 74 or higher, so at least 74. And all of the sections have to be greater than 69, so a 70% or higher. Both of those criteria must be met in order to come to paramedic school here. So what if you make an 84 on the exam, but you make a 67 on the EMT knowledge section? Unfortunately, you won't be accepted into the paramedics program this year, but we would encourage you to study up and, and brush up on your EMT knowledge and apply next year, and you probably have a very good chance of being successful uh, in your second application. So. Um, don't 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 worry. We'll still be around, and you can come to paramedic school next year. And in the meantime, it's good to brush up on your EMT knowledge. You need that. Um, that but that could be true for the math section, writing section, whatever. Um, so once you take that FISDAP entrance exam uh, and, and and we get your score report, then the next step, the third part of the application process, is a video recorded EMT simulation scenario. So we're going to give you an actor or an actress who has a medical problem or or is injured and you'll be asked to treat that person and describe your treatment um, as a competent EMT. That's video recorded and it's scored. It's evaluated by our faculty. You could either do that virtually if you're not local and you can't get here on campus, or if COVID, uh, if, if local COVID restrictions prevent us from holding it in person, we'll do it virtually by Zoom, or you can do it in person here. And we'll, once we get closer to scheduling those, um, we'll let you know what the format is going to be and give you a chance to practice so you can sort of go through that process and see what it's like. Um, that's, that videotape is then recorded. And finally, the fourth step is the Paramedic Program Selection Committee interviews. Uh, a panel of seven um, industry experts, so chiefs of EMS agencies, assistant chiefs, a program director from our local flight companies, members of Anchorage Fire Department, Matsuburo EMS, some um, educators here at the university. Um, we'll interview you. They'll ask you a series of nine questions, and at the end of the, uh, the process, they will have access to your application that you submitted online, your um, FISDAP paramedic entrance exam scores, and your video recorded EMT scenario, and they'll ask you those nine questions, and at the end of the interview, they are checking a box that says recommend for paramedic school or do not recommend for paramedic school based on all that they've seen and they just want you to be successful. That's the main thing. They want to make sure you, you're coming to the program ready and you're successful. And what you need is for, of those seven, you need four of the seven to check recommend. It's usually unanimous, one way or the other. Um, but that's what your goal is, to get set four of the seven um, selection committee members to recommend you for paramedic school. Now, full disclosure, I'm not a member of the paramedic program selection committee. I'm on your side of the application process. I'm your advocate uh, and your advisor to help you prepare for and put your best foot forward through this whole entire process. So I'm going to help you prepare as much as I can. I'm going to give you as much information as I can. I'm here to answer your questions and make sure that when you submit your application, when you take your entrance test, when you do your scenario, you know what to expect. You, you've got opportunities to prepare for that and you put your best foot forward. Uh, we'll accept 16 students into the 21-22 paramedic program. And uh, I suspect we may have more applicants than we have spots. So we'll be having to make some decisions based on entrance exam scores, video simulation scoring, and the recommendations that we get from the paramedic selection committee. So we want you to go into it with your eyes open and be re really ready to, to tackle it. And that's what I'm here for. 
So whatever the selection committee decides, that's our class for the 21, 22 uh, paramedic program, and I'll be happy to have them. But I don't help, I don't make that decision. It's not a choice that I make. So as I as promised, here is a QR code for the online paramedic school application. And I would encourage you to take out your phone, uh, snap a picture of this, or you can just take take a, a screenshot with your phone. And this QR code will take you to the uh, 21, 22 online paramedic school application. If you're not able to do that, that technology doesn't work for you, then just go to matsu.alaska.edu, navigate to the paramedic program page, and you'll find a button on the right side that says apply now. And that will take you to the application as well. I'll leave it up just for a second so you have a chance to grab it. All right. Last thing, I want to encourage you, if you have more questions, and many of you probably will, this probably doesn't answer all of your questions, and there's a lot of individual components to the program that you may have questions about and how it's going to work for you, um, I would really encourage you to book an advising appointment with me. So this QR code will take you to an online appointment booking um, software that'll let you book an advising appointment directly with me and, and I usually spend about 45 minutes to an hour working with students to explain how the process works, uh, answer questions about the application process, give you some insight how to prepare for the application process um, and then just you know just help you with whatever specific questions that you might have. When you book an appointment it also gets you kind of on my list, my email list, so that I can send to you tips and reminders, um, best practices, and those kinds of things for preparing for the entrance test. Um, let you know when you can practice to take a virtual um, scenario, th the videotaped piece, and then help you with uh, potentially help you with interview questions and an opportunity to practice for the interview to kind of brush up on your interview skills as well. So schedule an appointment with me, and I would be happy to talk with you. If you if this QR code doesn't work for you, not a problem. Go to matsu.alaska.edu, navigate to the paramedic program page, and there is a blue link on the right side that says book an appointment now, and you can book an appointment there too. It's easy to get to. All right, that's all I have. I really appreciate you for hanging in there and watching this pretty long video about the 21-22 paramedic school. Um, if you have any questions, book an appointment with me, and I'd be happy to talk to you. Best of luck. Bye now.